channel. My name is Amy and you're watching Fisher Hunts, the Midwest Mobile Escape Room. Today we're going to be talking about 10 different ways that you can reset a lock. To start off, if you need help with a very specific lock, you're welcome to jump to that part of the video, but I'll also be having individual videos come out for each of these so that you can just save it if you need to go back and look at it again rather than click through this one. Another note is if you're actually trying to break open a lock, like if it's locked and you can't open it, this reset video is not gonna help you because to reset something, you need it to have it on the code it was originally on and to have the shackle open. So if this thing is locked, I'm sorry, you're gonna need bolt cutters or something, um, or maybe there's some other videos out there for you, especially how to crack like combo locks and things like that. Um, but this is how to reset things the right way. For everyone else that's just interested in lock mechanisms like I am, I have 10 different locks that all reset in different ways. So let's get started. To start off, we're gonna look at this three number TSA lock, very popular kind of lock. So this one, the code lines up here on the side, it's all zeros. Some of them line up on the front, but this one's on the side. Just to show you that that's the code that opens up. And we wanna focus on this notch here on the shackle. You can see that is two spots that it can fall into. First one is in line with the lock. That's how it opens and closes. To reset it though, we'll use this 90 degree angle and we push it down. While we reset it, it'll move these uh, notches so you can tell that you're doing something and then you keep it down, keep the pressure on it while you reset it. We're gonna reset it to our favorite number, 3.14. Awesome, and now we can release the pressure and it should open and close. Just to show you that it's actually locked on here, we're gonna reset this. And it's locked, it's stuck. We're gonna go put it back to 3.14, just to show that it'll open now. Awesome, there we go. That lock is now reset to that number. Um, the key hole at the bottom, you don't have to worry about that. That's just for TSA people. Um, it has nothing to do with resetting it. We've got some other examples here. This is a four number one, also TSA approved. Opens the same way on that 90 degree angle. Also have a littler three number one, uh, not TSA approved, but using the same mechanism. And last but not least, we have a four letter lock, kind of unique and it changes on the 90 degree angle also. This one has a nice big shackle on it. And there you go, four different locks, but using the same mechanism to reset it all together. All right, we have another code here. This is a four number color coded lock. The code lines up here on the bottom and it should come as all zeros like this one. And the reset is here on the side, it's a little button um, and the line on it tells you if it's on or if it's going to be turned to reset, which we'll do in a second. But you want to make sure that this is actually the code, so make sure that you can push the shackle all the way down, not just a little bit. And you want to keep it on what the code is supposed to be to reset it. Very important to start off that way. So we need this uh, really unique tool here, it should have come with the lock. If you don't have one, you'll need to find something very similar to use because it's really important that it's this shape. So it comes in here, you push down on the button and then spin it. It won't do this unless it's on the right lock. So now it's set to reset. So the gears here will be a little hard to turn, which is good with what we want. And they might only turn in one direction. We're gonna reset it to my favorite number again, pi. So three, one, four, one. Awesome. Now we take our tool again and we push in on that button and spin it back and the button should pop back out again. Back to on. Awesome. Should open and close. And we'll test it just to make sure that it truly is stuck on just that code itself. And yep. It's stuck. So let's go back, change it back to the code we had. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna look at how to reset this directional lock to show you what the code is to start. We have up, down, left, left, right, right. 
cool. So that's the first code. We're gonna reset it using this reset thing here in the bottom. This little notch is gonna go up to the R, which stands for reset. And you'll wanna grab something really small, like a pen or a bobby pin, something that'll fit in that hole. And you definitely wanna keep your shackle open for this. So put it in there, move it up to the R, and then we'll close the shackle and pump it twice and open it. And now keep that open while we put in our new code, which is up, left, down, right, up. Just a big circle. Now we can move this notch back down, but keep your shackle open. Move it back to normal. And now you can test it. Moment of truth. Shackle pumps twice. New code, up, left, down, right, up. Woohoo, it opens. Now we'll test the last code to show that it doesn't work. Up, down, left, left, right, right. Hey, it's locked. So it's officially on the new code. Up, left, down, right, up. Awesome. Good job. All right, so we're gonna do this four letter lock now. Currently set to the word pray here on the front by these black lines. So it closes, we're gonna show you that it's locked. So it really needs to be the word pray. And this one resets here on the bottom. There's a little slot here that's for a coin. Quarters seem to work the best. And we're gonna move it towards the arrow, which is the reset button. So now you can move these into your new code and the gears should be harder to turn. In this case, we're gonna change it to the word lock. If you're getting one of these locks right out of the package, this is probably what it will be set to, L-O-C-K, just in case you have one new and it's locked for you. Okay, so that's what we want it to be. Take our quarter and move it back to the original position. Cool, closes, opens, exactly what we want. Let's change it to something else just to see. Yep, it's locked. L-O-C-K, new code, awesome sauce. I have another lock that is just like this, except it's five letters, currently set to the word booty. But this code resets on the side. Same kind of way, just need your quarter, change it to reset. I'm gonna zoom up through this because it's the exact same. We're gonna change it to be words, which is how this lock comes in the package. Move it back to the original. And there you go. Pretty easy. All you need is a simple quarter. All right, we have another three number TSA lock here. This one's by Master. And this one has numbers that line up here on the front, according to those dots. This one's really interesting because 000 is the code. You can't pull it like a normal lock. You have to pull it inside. I'll give you a better look at it. There's like a bigger hole that it goes in and locks into. And to get it out, you have to push it the same way. So we can change it to a different code and you'll see that not only does it not pull up, but it doesn't even pull into that second spot. So 000 is the code. Now I'll show you how to reset it. This key on the bottom, you can ignore. That's just for the TSA people at airports, but we care about this other little button here. And you'll need something small like a pen or a bobby pin. And we're gonna end up pushing this button in, but then you'll have to do that while you reset the things on the front. So it takes a little bit of doing. So we're gonna push that in and then change it to be our new code. Three, one, four. Okay, take your pen out. So the button is no longer pushed in. Test it to make sure it closes. Woo! So there's our new code. We can test to make sure that if there's another code in here, it won't open. Yeah, it's not gonna open. All right, back to three, one, four. And voila! I do have one more lock that is very similar. It's a little heart lock, one of the first ones I ever had actually. This button is on the corner. 
and it also uh, lines up here on the side rather than the front. And another difference is this one has a button that you have to push whenever you get the right code and that finally releases the shackle. Very interesting. For this next lock, we have a really cool five number lock also with uh, unique color dials. This one is currently on its code. It's 25183. And just to show you, if we change it, it's not opening anymore. So let's move it back. You wanna always remember to have it on the code that it is currently on before you can change it. This end piece will come off. See how it turns, turns, and then you shimmy it off. And then each gear comes off individually. They all have little teeth on them to hold them in place. And then here on the bottom, there's these red marked lines. That's where they need to line up here on the bottom so that the lock will open. So you can put these colors on in any order. We're gonna use the number that we always like, 3.1415. These will want to fall off, so you wanna just make sure they're stuck on there in the code you still want. And then this one goes on at the 90 degree angle and slides up. It should stay. Cool, now it locks back into place. Let's test it one more time, change the code, and it's locked. So I'll move it back to 31415. Awesome. We have one more lock that's very similar. This one has uh, bumpy parts to it. Um, and this one lines up here on the front rather than on the bottom like that other lock. This one, the end piece is a little bit harder to get come off. It doesn't spin. You just have to pull on it. You can tell it took me a while to get this thing off. There it goes. Just gotta shimmy that one off too. And once again, we have that red marked line right where you need the actual code to be. We're gonna keep this one just as it is, just to show you how similar it is. And it pops back on at the end. And there you go. Two different five number combinations, very similar. This is one of my favorite locks. It's a six letter cryptex. And right now it's currently set to the word rulers here by the arrows. These gears can be really fussy, so you really have to line up those letters or else the inside won't open. Now to reset it, you'll need this tool that you got when you first purchased the Cryptex. It's a very small tool with very tiny, tiny screws. Luckily they give you extras. So we're gonna use this tool on these little screws. There's two of them here so that we can start taking it apart. And I always do my best to not lose these, even though I have extras. The goal is not to lose them. Okay, very carefully. Now I can take this bottom piece off and all of these gears come off all at once. I like to keep them in the same order just because I know they spin well that way, but I think you can change them around if you really want to. Okay, we're gonna change this to the word Fisher just because. So first I'm gonna find the letter it was once on with an R. There should be a notch right underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my finger right in that notch. That's just how I'm gonna hold it. And I'm gonna take off the letter gear around it and change it to be an F or whatever you want your new combination to be. So then we slide that on, make sure your new letter is right above that notch. And once you're done with that one, you can go ahead and put it on your mechanism while you fix the rest of them. Okay, this one is going to be the letter I. Have my finger in the hole. Change it to be an I. And, oops, I got this one to be an H instead. Well, this is another good example. Um, there's a little notch here on the outside. And you can see how it fits into all those little grooves. Since I'm just one letter off, I'm gonna move it one notch over. Awesome, now we have an eye. Cool, the rest of this was pretty easy. Just changing it like we did the first two, F-I-S-H-E-R. They don't need to be lined up on the answer for this next part, so they are welcome to spin around. 
Now I gotta put this outside piece on. You see how there's a notch up here? That lines up with the hole in the inside. And that should line up where your screws go. Now I gotta be really careful, take these little baby screws, put them back in those holes. And be careful not to screw them all the way in because then they'll be in the way of the middle piece trying to get in. So they'll be flush with the top part. So now I just have to carefully screw those in, make sure they're flush on the top and the bottom. And now we're trying to get this second one in. And against my better judgment, it was tighter to try and screw it in, which is not what you want. Maybe your normal screw jobs where you're screwing a, something in, it's supposed to have a little bit of tension to it, but that is not what you want with this. And the proof that I did it wrong is right there. You see that left side being pushed in more than the right? That is not what it's supposed to look like. That means I was pushing in the screw when it wasn't perfectly lined up with its little hole. So now I have to go back and screw it out a little bit, make sure it's fixed. Oh, that looks much better. Now we can screw it in. See the difference? Okay. Now the inner piece can go in, but this is the part where the code now actually has to be lined up on those arrows. Okay, we have Fisher lined up on the arrows. Again, this is pretty fussy, so you might have to mess with it. There we go. Big Cryptex is now all done. I do have another small Cryptex that is kind of similar. Make sure you keep your tool. Don't want to lose that. We have this baby cryptex that only has five letters on it rather than six. It's currently set to the word skull. And this one also has screws on the same side as that last one, except this time we're gonna use this little eyeglass screwdriver because this is just a different kind of screw. I got this Cryptex secondhand, so it's possible that you get tools with it, but I didn't, so I just found the thing I needed around the house. This is all very similar to the other one, so I'm gonna show you to take these screws out, but everything else is basically the same. And that's how you reset a Cryptex. Here's another kind of lock. This one's on a diary. And there's a button here. You push it to the left, open it. And just to show you the code right now is 413. We can change it. And the button no longer pushes to the left, does not open. So back to 413, push to the left and it opens. So in this one, the left is to open it, but to the right is how you reset it. So you just have to hold it in that right position we're gonna change it to our favorite number again. And now it should still push back to the left. Open. If we move it back to the 413, it doesn't work anymore. So 314 is now the new code. Voila! That's a fun one. Here we have another four number lock. This one lines up right dead center. And the way you reset it is this switch here on the back. So first, just to show you, the code is 1695 and it opens and closes. We can change it and it will lock. So you wanna have it on the code and have the shackle open. The switch will push up and then to the left. And that's where it will sit while you reset it. You wanna make sure it stays there. So we're gonna reset it to our favorite number again. Three, one, four, one. Make sure that switch doesn't move. It's easy to accidentally knock it out of place. Three, one, four, one. Now we can put that switch back where it belongs. 
and it opens and closes, which is good. You can change it, and hey, it locks. Cool, so 3141 is now the new combination. Now the cool thing about this kind of mechanism is it's not only padlocks. Here I have a hidden Bible box, and the inside of this also has this little switch. This one says from A to B. Also this briefcase has the same mechanism. You open it up and look in here. This one is teeny. It's a little, little, little switch, but also the same thing. And then last but not least, we have this makeup case. When the passcode is correct, push this section to the right. Love how that opens. And once again, this one also has a little switch, we can zoom in on it, that moves up and left. This kind of mechanism can work really great for boxes and things where the reset mechanism is inside. So I'm not a huge fan of this padlock. It's a little bit too easy to reset it accidentally. Here we have a really neat combination lock. However, this one can be reset. This one has letters and numbers on it and we'll show you what the code is currently. Gotta spin it first to clear it. This one is currently set to one, as in the word one, but the O is a zero. Then you always go past the first number to the second one, in this case is the letter N. And then to the third one, E, which now opens it. So this one resets with this cool tool, so you definitely don't wanna lose this. The way you use this tool is you insert it in the hole where the shackle was, make sure it's facing the shackle and it doesn't matter one way or the other. You press it down as far as it'll go and then face it towards you. It won't click into position or anything, so just get it as close to 90 degrees as you can. And this reset is actually really easy. You just spin it to clear it, a whole bunch. <laughs> and then you put in your new code, just as if you were opening it for the first time. So in this case, we're gonna use the word sir. So start with S, go past it the first time. And this one doesn't have an I, so we're gonna pretend the one is an I. And then go back to the R. And then you just remove your tool, turn it back the way it was, and pull it out of the hole. You can close your lock now, spin it to clear it. And then we're just gonna test to make sure that it opens. Sometimes when you first close this, it's hard to turn the dial, so it's good to turn it a lot to make sure it's really clear. So we're gonna try out our new SIR code. Start with the S, go past it, the I or the one, and R. Awesome, there we go. It's very cool to see a combination lock that is able to be reset. Now let's talk about some locks that you can't reset. Let's get started. So there's some obvious ones like key locks. If you're stuck with the keys you have, don't lose them. We have some other fancier key locks. This is a really tiny lock with an H key. And that's how that one opens. Can't really reset any of those. We have these magnet locks. They come with these really cool magnet keys. And now we have a bolt lock. This one just uses a tool to unscrew that bolt in there. Um, obviously, can't reset those either. Got this one at an antique store. Next, I have this button lock. It's what I like to call it because you have to press buttons to open it. This has a code that it comes with. They tell you what the code is. This one is 1278. So whenever I use this in my escape rooms, I have to make sure that the code is 1278 because I am not able to reset it. Really cool though. I like these locks a lot. Next we have this um, antique looking lock. Not a whole lot of options on these uh, dials. And this one is molded, so I can't change it at all. And this code is A-Y-R-H-R. -R. The dials keep wanting to spin on me. There it goes. As you can see, those gears are not gonna be changeable. 
So same thing, all of my codes need to have AYRHR as the answer. Next, we have these combination locks, locker locks. Um, some of these can be reset, but the typical ones you get at Walmart or a dollar store will have the code on the back and you're stuck with it. And in the same vein, we have some other combination locks, just a little bit different. This one's a letter lock and it did have the code on the back. So same thing, all my puzzles need to line up with that lock. And recently I found some really neat combination locks. This one has zodiac signs on it. But same thing, the combo is on the back and I'm stuck with it. And that's it. That's all the locks that I own that cannot be reset. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Don't forget to like this video if you really enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I post about escape room content and behind the scenes, how to make puzzles, uh, you know, things of that sort, if that interests you, this is the channel for you. Um, and I really enjoy having you here. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>